So welcome my friends, Noctua has just released this new cooler. This is the NHD12L and it's supposed to be very small and very, very powerful. But how powerful? Can it handle the 12900K in here? Well, let's find out. Licensing Windows has never been easier and cheaper. Go to whokeys.com, search for Windows 10 Pro License or click on the link in the video description below. Purchase the license and use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. Paste the key into the activation settings and you're all done. By the way, this license also works for Windows 11 when upgraded from licensed Windows 10. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So then, basically this cooler comes roughly around $90, okay? And this is for people who want something very compact and something very, very powerful. And you might be familiar with the Noctua NHD 15 cooler, like the Chromax version or this brown version, then this is quite a big tower. And in a moment, I'll show you like how big these are compared to each other. It is like the most compact dual tower design of Noctua coolers. Here it is. And it is very, very small. Now you might be looking at this and thinking it looks exactly the same size as all the other dual tower coolers. Let me take this one out and then you'll see how small it is. I mean, look at the size difference. It's absolutely massive. So if you put them side to side, over here you can see that the nhd 15 is longer and taller as you can see quite a bit over here and if you also run the front fan of this Noctua nhd 15 the front fan comes even higher just because the ram is going to be underneath here so that's going to be even bigger but another interesting thing for this uh, nhd 12l cooler is that one tower is skinnier than the other one so that's very interesting just a, another little characteristic to keep it small so if you put the secondary fan over here which we're going to do in a moment as well i've got a second fan for this we'll test to see how much of the secondary second fan will improve the cooling of this cooler. So now this way you can see how much taller the NHD 15 is on this side and how much smaller the 12L is on here. Inside the box of this cooler comes obviously one fan in the middle. You've got this and then you've got the whole like cooling accessories here as well. So if you want to get this for your system, it does already come with LGA 1700 mounting socket because this cooler is newer than the 1700 basically. LGA 17 like guide and how to install this. Comes with all sorts of mounting brackets for everything as well as a screwdriver which is very nice for Noctua they always in, like include everything so you don't actually need any others like everything you need to install this is inside the box there is also quite a bit of thermal paste included as well the NTH1 thermal paste from Noctua very nice thermal paste and the Noctua sticker as well if you're into that type of thing before I put it into the system I need to talk about the aesthetics now this only comes in the brown version okay some people absolutely love and swear by the Noctua brown version and brown color because it's it just shows Noctua and it just means you know it means business but some people don't like it that much but so far there isn't a black or Chromax black version available for this yet maybe one day it will be also the fan that's in the middle over here is slightly different than the fans of the usual NFA 12x 25 fans if you don't know those fans these are like probably the best 120 millimeter fans in the world this is slightly different there is an r in the end of this fan which just makes it round so basically it's not perfectly square it's got a little round edges over here to kind of clip in it's slightly different so they can't really go for the case so these fans are only meant for the cooler you can't use them for the case fans because the screw holes won't line up because the screw holes won't be 120 millimeters basically i guess you could somehow get it for the case as well but it's not ideal because the front case you know because you've got like rails there you could actually mount it for the case but it just wouldn't really work they're really meant for this cooler let's get it installed and then uh, see how it performs
Okay, installation process done. Just uh, turn the computer on and we're gonna start uh, checking some of the thermals in a moment. But just a few words about the installation process. It's always with Noctua coolers and with this one, it's always very nice. It's a very nice experience. I like that you're gonna put the like back bracket with the right um, kind of metal brackets on the socket first and then you're going to put the cooler there because then your back bracket isn't going to be falling out or anything by the way just so you know the thicker like kind of part of the tower goes from the back side and then the skinnier one goes from the front side because as you can see sorry about this aio in the way don't worry it's not plugged in only the fans are just plugged in because uh this is my test bench setup over here this tower clears all of the ran completely like this tower finishes before all the ram this fan is completely silent i think i can hear it now but from here i can hear all the other fans and other bits but this is completely silent it's it's absolutely insane so we've got cinebench r23 here which is actually one of the like worst tests for cpu because it's very synthetic as well and if you kind of pass it on cinebench you're going to pass it in real world as well because this is avx and absolutely it, like very very intensive for the cpu uh, 10 minutes of throttling let's turn it on let's see what's going to happen okay we're 84c 85 5c and we're pulling 228 watts from the socket by the way that's insane inside the room over here i'm gonna put this down just so you know just so you can see this here 24 0.3 degrees now we are 91 degrees 92 93 degrees okay this is quite quite heavy test here uh, because as you can see we've hit 101 degrees which is four degrees short of like the maximum We've pulled 240 watts from the socket and the like hotter the CPU gets, the more leakage of voltage there is, which means that we're pulling more and more wattage to kind of maintain the same performance. But then it gets, you know, hotter and hotter and it's just like a snowball rolling effect going down the hill. So we've got 101 degrees and this is like insane, right? 240 watts from the socket. Okay, I don't actually recommend to overclock your cpu for creators and as a creator but for this test just to put different like wattages through the cpu i'm gonna do a little under vaulting okay over here we're gonna put core voltage offset by 0.05 volts okay we're gonna go apply okay there we go we're gonna take this off and then let's have a look at the wattage and how does it work now when we are a little bit under vaulted our CPU. Okay, as you can see, we're pulling 204 watts now from the socket, not quite as much. So we've lost kind of like 30 watts from the socket. And now with this one fan, we're 85C. That is absolutely amazing still, just to kind of put it in perspective. If you got like a Ryzen 9 5950X or something like that, that will run you like 160, 170 watts, maybe 180 watts if you have PBO enabled. And this is much, much more than that. And it still keeps it under control. We're still kind of on the toasty side, but there's only one fan here. And it's very, very kind of low cooler. If you look at the NHD 15, would be running like a few degrees, you know, less, but this is still very, very impressive to me. We're still pulling 210 watts and something like that. And let's see if we can pull the wattage down even further. We're gonna put this to 0 0.06. Let's have a look at the uh, hardware info now. 203 watts pulled from the socket, as you can see here. And we're running 88 see something like that 204 i'd like to get it slightly lower than uh, 205 watts so we're just going to put 0 0.075 let's see if this is going to work hopefully this is still not going to crash okay there we go i'm going to put this down and let's do this here okay 1907 let me just reset those values and as you can see we're running 88 something like that, 88C, but we're still pulling close to 200 watts from the socket. So now my secondary question is, 
I want to find out how much does it improve now when we put the secondary fan on. By the way, just so you are aware, this is absolutely the worst case scenario. Like, this is one of the only CPUs that pulls from stock more than 200 watts from the socket, like a mainstream CPU. Any of the Ryzen CPUs are going to be much lower and even the i7 will be much lower than this. i7 will pull you like 160, 170, something like that degrees. Okay, I just wanted to see like where, what does Noctua advertise, where does the other fan should go, you know, should go in the front or in the back. So Noctua here shows that it is actually in the front of the, as you can see, look at that. So this is in the front on the smaller part, you can put another fan. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Let's put this small, this fan now in the front. Let's see if there's any difference in the cooling. Previously we hit 92 degrees and we're 25.2 degrees here in this room at the moment. So then let's start the torture test again and then let's see wow i mean would you look at that the secondary fan straight away makes a massive difference look at that we're pulling 192 watts from the socket right and we're about 10 c cooler at the moment than previously that's a huge huge uh difference even 84 was still that's that's pretty amazing. As you can see, our uh, CPU is not even pulling that much power anymore because the cooling is a little bit less. We're pulling 197 watts and look, we're about 6C lower than, than previously. That's absolutely amazing. And we're quite hot in this room. This is 25.2 degrees. It's very, very, very warm in here compared to like anything usual. So at the moment, look, we're on the third run or something like that. We're pulling 190, okay. We're heating up a little bit now, but as you can see, we're still able to cool this down much better than previously. The secondary fan does, as you can see here, help in few degrees. So constantly we're pulling a few degrees less on the CPU. Like now it's it's heated up and it's even hotter in the room than, than previously, about one degrees more. And we're blaffery one or two degrees lower than previously with one fan. So the secondary fan does make a difference, but the biggest impressive thing about this is it's absolutely silent. Like all I can hear are these fans around. These are the Fantix T30 fans and they're going quite fast at the moment because they're trying to push like, you know, cool air for this CPU here. I can't hear these. Oh, look at that. Now when I've taken the tubes out of the way, it runs a little bit cooler just because it gets a little bit better airflow to the cooler it doesn't hit 91 c anymore look at that we're pulling the maximum uh, wattage at the moment 201 watts and we're 90 degrees let's see if it goes 91 degrees as well or not look at that about 88 90 degrees for such a small form factor cooler and completely quiet this is absolutely amazing like i can't hear the cooler unless i put my ear to about here like those fans are absolutely amazing, so, so cool. So if you want to buy this cooler, which type of CPU would you pair up with this? I would say don't go with the i9 12900K or 11900K, unless you wanna do some undervolting and wanna get the actual temperatures down. It's gonna run a little bit toasty and I wouldn't recommend that. But if you have an i7 or i5, you have an absolutely fantastic cooler here, very small, like it takes much less space. In fact, the more impressive thing is that if you just have what, one fan, the cooling is only maybe a few degrees more than with the secondary fan. So I would recommend getting the secondary fan really if you run something very intensive and you really just want the fan speeds to be lower because then you get the same performance, but then a little bit quieter, but it's still very, very, very quiet. Now, I wish there was a Chromax version of this because I'd love to see a black version of this, but this is still very, very nice. Now, last thing is, if you wanna do pick up this cooler, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. But I am very, very impressed. And if you're into the, you know, Noctua coolers, want something quiet and powerful, then this is quite a nice version. Very premium quality installation, very quiet. And 
I'm actually very impressed. I mean, to cool 200 watts of power with like air cooling with such small form factor like this, I'm not sure there is anything else quite like that out there. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna leave this in the description below. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you in the comment section below. Bye-bye.